Hello and welcome, I'm Raymond, and today I'll guide you through the process of integrating an API with an API gateway using InforOS. You'll discover the essence of an API gateway, its importance, and the steps to set one up using InforOS. Plus, you'll learn how to effectively test it. When we ask, what is an API gateway? We're referring to a crucial software system. It acts as a reverse proxy, forming a bridge between API consumers like web and mobile applications and providers, including Infor and other external services. Let's talk about the role of an API gateway. It functions as a strong intermediary, guaranteeing secure and efficient communication between consumers and providers. A unified access point simplifies everything for developers and their applications by providing a single base URL path for easier API access. Streamlined security enhances protection by creating a uniform authentication process. This ensures that all API interactions are secure and only authorized requests get through. Enhanced API capabilities mean that the gateway boosts your API with additional features, all without altering the existing server or its code. This includes analyzing performance, logging usage patterns, and conducting thorough searches of those logs. All right. Let's dive into how to incorporate an API into the gateway. Start by navigating to the API Gateway tab within InforOS. Once there, you'll find available APIs in the upper left corner. Clicking this will take you to the menu where all the accessible APIs are listed for you. If you're looking to introduce a new API, simply hit the Add button and you'll see two options. You have the freedom to either craft an API from the ground up or choose from a selection of templates. These templates cover popular Infor applications and even third-party services like AWS, Twitter, and others, allowing you to set up quickly on your own. If we opt to develop an API from the ground up, particularly one not offered among the templates, we'll proceed by clicking the Create New button. After that, we'll be required to fill in a handful of fields. First up, we have the application name. In this scenario, I'm utilizing a third-party API from a company named Neutrino, which you can find online. They offer a variety of general web application APIs. For the API context, I'll assign a version number, which will be V2 for this example. Moving on to the suite name, I'll label it Neutrino APIs. And for the description, I'll simply state General Web API. That's all there is to it. Next, there's the option to select an icon. I can either upload a custom one or pick from a selection that's already provided. Great, we've wrapped up the general description. Next, we need to define at least one target endpoint. This step is crucial as it informs the API gateway about the actual destination API URL. Let's hit the plus sign to input the proxy endpoint, which, in our case, Neutrino the vendor has provided. Following that, we'll add a description. For the proxy context, we'll use APIs. It's important to understand that this will become a component of the public-facing proxy endpoint URL that InforOS constructs for us. This URL comprises few distinct elements. Firstly, the tenant name, then the repository for all our custom APIs. Next, the API context we specified earlier. And finally, the proxy context. Together, these components form the complete URL. This becomes the endpoint that we'll give to developers, signaling them to use this URL to hit the API in our gateway for accessing the services. We have two primary options for securing that URL. OAuth 2.0 is the default standard. There's also the option for anonymous access, but that's generally reserved for testing phases, so it's best to stick with OAuth 2.0. The security for the target endpoint needs to match what Neutrino's web service specifies. According to their documentation, they require an API key method for security. The API gateway supports various security methods, including ones used by AWS and Google. However, Neutrino opts for a widely used approach known as the API key method. This method necessitates the input of specific keys. For Neutrino, the first key is identified as a user ID and the second key is referred to as the API key. I will enter the key values associated with my Neutrino account. With all of that information entered, we can now save our definition. If we were to glance back at the available API section under the Neutrino API suite definition, we'd see that everything has been configured and saved. The status would now be set to active. 
The status indicator here also marks the API as active. The next step you might consider is adding some documentation. To do this, let's click on the documentation icon. Given that this is a modern RESTful API, the API Gateway supports various documentation formats with PDF being the default. However, opting for Swagger or an open API specification is a more dynamic and contemporary choice. The vendor we're collaborating with offers their API specification in JSON format. So we'll enter that URL and click Save. Now, you'll notice that the API suite has been updated. As we scroll down, we observe that the API specifications have been rendered, allowing us to view all the available services. Navigating to the URL info service, we can access detailed information about this specific API, including examples of how to make calls and what responses to expect. By clicking on the Try It Out button, we can test it by entering a URL, such as google.com, and executing a query against that URL. Now, with the credentials and the two keys we've entered, it's retrieving live information directly from Neutrino and delivering a response in real time. Receiving a 200 code is excellent news as it confirms a successful interaction providing us with all the details about the URL. This verifies that the API and its suite have been successfully integrated and are now primed for use within our applications. Exploring this functionality demonstrates the seamless integration and real-world application of our API suite ensuring it's fully operational and accessible for our development needs. This marks a significant step forward in our journey towards optimizing and enhancing our application ecosystem.